What are we starting with this week? YouTube comment Give of the month. Gosh darn. Right. Yes. Congratulations. I'm getting the hang of this. Hey, well good done. job. Yeah. Look at you. Thank you. So the YouTube comment of this month comes from Dara Simpson. And it says, is Beyonce not the world's alpha? You see, in reference to last week's episode, which was about oh, alpha male men. Oh, yes. Yeah. So maybe Beyonce is the world's alpha. The world's sigma, maybe. Beyonce would definitely be a Sigma, wouldn't she? Yeah, she would be. So I do have a question before we start. So if you're listening to this on audio, then head to YouTube. And... You mean that's not the question? No. No. Oh, no. Okay. No, no, no. I, usually I start these with a question. You'll know. You've we been like here. We like opinions on the Beyonce thing as well. Sure. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> sure, that too. Question one, is Beyonce the world's alpha? <laughs> <laughs> question two, how old are you? Never ask a lady her age. <laughs> You can ask a b- the rage though. Oh, I can't say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Demonetized. <laughs> Put that on the TikTok. <laughs> if you want to answer those questions, you're listening on audio, head over to YouTube at youtube.com forward slash side guys and let us know in the comments of this video. Let us know. Let us know. Let us know. Let us know. Start the show. Start the show. Hello and welcome to Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cutforth. That is me. Good day. This week, we're talking about Nazi nuclear cubes. Nazi Very fun topic. Nuclear cubes. Yes. Is it the Tesseract from? Captain America, the first Avenger. Jeff, you just I, ruined the whole episode. I genuinely so sorry. thought that we would last longer in this episode before a Captain America <laughs> reference. <laughs> like, I'm not no, going to lie. Straight out, straight out. But there what was a Nazi about. cube in that film. What? I mean, Are we I, talking about that? The Nazis had it. Well, they weren't. They had Hydra kind of separated from the Nazis at that point, didn't they? Yeah, but no, yeah, well, yeah. basically Nazis. I had no idea there were Nazis in the Marvel comic universe. Cinematic oh, universe. Yeah. Captain, Captain America, America punched punches, a Nazi in the face. He punched punches Hitler King in the Nazi face. In the face. Even yeah. the films of those that I've seen, I haven't paid attention to. Mm. Why? Why have you watched them? They're, f- they're f- totally fun. I just don't commit them to memory. Uh, you don't take on information that's not relevant that's, to you. Exactly. That's that makes perfect they're sense. They're perfectly yeah. fun. Yeah, they're perfectly fun. They are perfectly Love fun. you, Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy Disney. Da- Big Daddy Disney. <laughs> so, nah, Big Daddy Amazon Prime. <laughs> okay. These are jokes that aren't... You, you can't make these. Okay. So... <laughs> The Nazis in World War II um, had a nuclear weapon program. Do you guys know about that? No. You didn't know about I'm that? I no, no. No? No? Well, no. They, did, they did have no. one. Um, and it went ahead uh, two years before the American program <gasps> went. When you say went ahead, do you mean begun? Began. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, they didn't go ahead with any... No, they were... Yeah. No. That would be a different history. Yeah, if you didn't know that they'd, that they'd you know, used nuclear weapons... Uh, that would be something. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be something. That'd be a big miss. No, so the they started the project two years before Americans started it. Um and we'll kind of we'll kind of talk through it, but um obviously it would seem that it did not go very well. Mm. Right? Mm. Luckily, obviously. Because we're not speaking German. Well that would be a giveaway. Yeah. 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 But the world is speaking English, so take from that what you will. Means nothing. Colonialism? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 The That's point- actually the saying of Britain in, historically, isn't it? Take from that what you will. <laughs> <laughs> entering oh, a country. <laughs> no, my point is, my point is, my point is, I just for anyone that might not have understood, I'm not trying to say that Britain is as bad as the Nazis. What I am saying is that people often say, well, Britain, we did, uh, Britain and America did have eugenics, and the Nazis kind of picked up on that. What I'm saying is that we view ourselves as a very good country, mm. um, and when we talk about a bad country. Um, you know, and they're a bad government from a country. We talk about the Nazis in Germany and we say, well, we're not all speaking German now, but the world is speaking English and we view that as a benevolent thing. That oh, was, I don't yeah. view it as either. I just view it that the Germans didn't invent the uh, nuclear bomb early enough. Oh yeah, no. That's like, all I take from it. Absolutely. <laughs> like, again, like I, I'm comp- we're comparing sort of uh, apples to Nazi oranges here. Mm. Um, like Nazis awful, but... Mm. Colonialist apples. Yeah, colonialist, colonialist apples. Yeah. They're better. <laughs> yeah. But they're not like perfect. I always found that funny about the Churchill statue thing last year. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. People were like, "Well, if it wasn't for Churchill, we'd all be speaking German." As if, yeah, but thanks okay. to Churchill, India's speaking English. So <laughs> you, know, you know, like it's not the German I was concerned about. <laughs> it's not. It's not the speaking German I was concerned about. No, yeah, I, I, I think before we before we get into this, because we we're talking about Nazis, we might actually we might we might be talking about um, other things around that time, and obviously, uh, one thing being bad does not make the opposition to it 
immediately good mm -hmm. makes them better does not make them inherently good yeah 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 so churchill still a big old big old tosser yeah. we don't like him so the Nazis had two nuclear weapons programs, um, and it, obviously during the Second World War, uh, they made 1,200 cubes of uranium, um, with about 600 of those end up in the US at the end of the war, some of them being put towards the US effort, um, mm. which, look, again, this is, I, I don't want this to come off the wrong way. Because I don't want people saying, oh, sympathizing with the Nazis, oh, you hate the US so much that you're going to make them out to be the, the bad guys against Nazis. Because, again, Nazis are the worst. Just the worst, okay? Mm. But it is odd to me that it's, like, Nazis inventing nuclear weapons, like, awful and terrible. Which, you know, obviously, yeah, genocide. But America taking the, the uranium cubes from the Nazis and using some of those towards their own effort to exterminate life using a nuclear bomb is good and but or they, at the very least neutral. But would they not have taken those after they've already dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and then have never used them before? I don't that, think I'd, I don't think they were I don't I, they weren't necessarily used specifically for that, but the Germans surrendered before the um the Germans surrendered before the uh, Japanese. Right. Okay, but what, what I mean is that like sure you you know the the record so far of those countries has been that they did this twice on two occasions and then they went never again and they never have and i think that's when it comes to specifically nuclear weapons that's that's a good record right twice is a bit yeah, much. but but of course yeah i'm i like, i've absolutely I mean, once is a bit much emphatically <laughs> like, yeah, well, <laughs> one you have to do it once to go what the what no, have we got no they really? did tests uh, yeah, but I don't think even tests can tell you like you turn a you turn a you turn sand to glass using a a, a bomb in a desert. You like bomb right, islands. Okay, yeah, they did tests. Okay, so they knew what they were doing. Uh, we're doing yeah. an episode on the Manhattan Project soon. They okay, did tests. Right. Okay, oh. right. You don't you don't you don't drop that bomb and go. Oh, whoops. Oh, didn't expect. Was that. there no re was there no record of of people being like, whoa, we didn't realize what we had. People will say that, but like. Yeah, ultimately, sure. Like, ultimately, and dropping them on, they dropped them on cities. Yeah. All I mean sure, is that the cities so had far, new, like had a, a had military bases. Yeah. Um. But but still, it wasn't it, like it. There was there was there were so many casualties there that yeah. affected them for that affected the the country for so long yeah. that it's just like even once is absolutely too much. No, of course. I just mean since those horrible things happened. The countries that have nuclear weapons have shown themselves to be good custodians of those nuclear weapons. Um, yeah, only in terms so of not using them, it's yeah. been seventy years. Yeah, not even. Well, yeah. The, my point is that my point is, um, and I think this is this is an interesting conversation to be had, and I'm glad we're having it. But my point is that I think that it's only a matter of time until it happens again. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? In 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 that we can say. The people that have the countries that have those weapons have been good custodians of them for like it was since since the the first two bombs were dropped, mm. but at some point that's going to end if we still have the nuclear weapons. Perhaps, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it it yeah. opened up a can of worms like Pandora's box where it's like, well, now that we know those exist, if you don't have one, yeah, then you're at a disadvantage. You're at a, you, yeah. like you're at a disadvantage. You're but always what a is threat the solution them. to that? That's the thing is you can say that, but what is the solution to it when you have a system where Countries don't have like different countries. You're not centrally controlling all the countries. Exactly. I yeah. don't know what the solution is. I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I mean, no. uh, Superman Four had a pretty good uh, solution to it. What was that? S Superman takes them and throws them into the sun. Well, but Superman's mm. not real. So we make Superman. Mm, you could. Mm, okay. So we got in contact well, with anyway, Krypton recently. Any things we could maybe up, do Jen. now? Oh, I bet. That's, oh. that's very. That's in well, then incredibly where's poor taste. Well, then where's Superman? I don't know. Probably blown up on Krypton, man. Well, then where do we get a Superman? I don't know. We find one. We make one. I don't know. But not from Krypton. Well, I can't come up with all the answers, sense. Jamp. Yeah, sorry, Luke. Where, <laughs> you, go on. You were saying something interesting. Was I? It's also been 80 years, has it not? No, 75. 45. What? 45, It was, it was yeah. in 45. For 75 years. No. Okay. No, it's been 81 years. No, 80, 76, 76 years. years. God, I'm not very good at math. Oh, no, no. So yeah. it's 76 years. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I guess I, I guess the problem is is that once you discover that technology and other co other countries 
with whom you're not friendly have discovered that technology and you don't have any mechanism to centrally organize the world. I don't understand. Like you can you can criticize it all you like, but I don't understand what the solution is. No, I, I I'm not like, yeah. I, again, I I I'm not saying, oh, we shouldn't have them. Oh, this is the I'm talking in an ideal world. We shouldn't yeah. have them. Yeah. Right. And I, I understand that there is not really much of a solution. That's what I'm saying. Like mm. Pandora's box is open. Mm. Now mm. what can you do? Mm. But also it is horrific. It's horrifying. Like the the devastation uh, like wrought by those. And I mean, yes, thank God. Thank God Nazi Germany did not um sort of get it like get that um technology before the rest of the world because I mean, yes, America did incredible and disgusting harm mm, with it. Mm. But having having the upper hand be handed to <clears throat> the the Nazis at that point would have would have uh, I, I I think probably caused far more devastation. Mm. Not that America American you know, not Americans. Not that America hasn't done its own fair share of harm, but realistically speaking, probably not as much as would have happened. Yeah. You know? Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, these cubes, uh, they had, so they, had, well, the cubes, I'll get to them in a second. So they had, uh, they had the, the cubes that went, um, the 600 of them went to the US um, towards the end of the war. Um, and some of them ended up going missing. Quite a few of them ended up going missing, actually. I've heard about this. You heard about this? Yeah. Yeah, quite a few of those cubes went missing because, you want a, a little uranium cube? I think they're about this size. Right. They're not. They're not large. Small cubes that you could fit in your hand. But um, yeah. Don't tell anyone that I have this. Okay. Okay. This is definitely not a, a Nazi uranium cube it's that I'm holding in my hand edition. right now. Yeah. It's very heavy. Corey's holding a, a a a very black cube painted with the blackest black commercially available paint. Um. Wow. That is so heavy. And thank goodness I'm so strong. Yes. <laughs> Ugh, gosh, you can barely even hold it with one hand. Weakling. It's very warm as well with all the radiation. Yeah. Wow. I've I don't want to go anywhere. Must anymore. have cancer in my hand now from all that radiation. Well, probably. Thanks. That'll man. be it. <laughs> what the hell are you playing at? <laughs> Sorry, bro. No, seriously. Um, a bunch of them went missing, and it's difficult to try and figure out. You know, because anyone can make a cube of uranium, right? Anyone can do that. So how yeah, do you figure out? I can do that. Yeah. So we'll put our minds to it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I had some uranium. <laughs> I had some uranium. Yeah. Uh, speak to me after the show. So, uh, well, I've already seen your uranium. It's already in a cube. I can just take yours. No, it's my uranium cube. It's mine no, when so, I make it. <laughs> it's when you die of cancer. I'll just take it back. I'm uh, not leaving it to you. <laughs> so, Jamp, you will be the custodian. So, yeah. So, the Nazi yeah. uranium cubes, some of them went missing. And there's an issue of trying to find them, obviously, because, you know, anyone can make a cube of uranium. How do you tell one cube of uranium from a, another cube of uranium? You know, it's not necessarily, it's not quite as easy as one might think. In fact, it's probably harder than one might think. Mm. Um, and we've developed kind of new techniques in order to try and figure out how to tell real ones from fake ones or try and figure out which ones are the, the genuine articles. Um, and I'll, I'll get onto that, spe the specifics of that kind of in a, in a bit. But the thing is that we really, we wanted a way to figure out like, because they're being sold in the black market, we want to know which ones are real, which ones aren't, where they ended up, how they ended where they are. Um, they're yeah. being sold on the black market as, as like, just... Collector's items. Collector's items. As, as they're radioactive. Seen, are they in something? Yeah, put them in a box. Right. Yeah, I've seen, I mean, I've seen them, I, I've, I, from what I've, from what I've uh, read, they've been used as sort of collector's items, although it's uranium, so probably could, I mean, I don't know how much, depends how much, to, no, you could probably still use it um, in... For whatever nuclear um, mishap you wanted to go about, we're doing. such a weird species where, like, a block of uranium, and then the exactly identical block of uranium that happens to have come from Nazi Germany, but is the same thing. They have different prices. Yeah, we are so weird. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> just the novelty. Isn't it? Yeah, it's but... NFTs all over again, isn't it? Sure. Yeah. Which and that's why NFTs really wind me up. I am aware. Yeah. So much. So in. So frustrating. Just you wait till Sci Guys launches an NFT. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. So the Nazis made these cubes. So uh, they were ma they were made in two different labs. Out of interest, sorry, quickly. Why cubes? I don't know. Probably just stack an easy shape like, to to yeah. stack and to have and easy enough to like create. You know, cool. Radio radioactive Tetris. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. So there were different labs that did it. Um, you you guys uh know uh. Werner Heisenberg. Werner Heisenberg. 
Is that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle guy? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Are you certain about that? Oh, yeah. like mm, 90% sure. Yeah. I'm okay. in a quantum state. But on principle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never fully certain. Yeah, so... You're right. So he uh, actually um, was he was working in the lab um, with these. It was his it was his lab, and um, he was working in Berlin initially, and then moved to a secret lab um, in Heigerloch, um or Heigerloch, I don't know um, in um, in the Alps uh, to avoid um, the Allied troops because obviously he was German and mm -hmm. a scientist, a scientist, and in Germany, and he wanted to avoid the Allied troops. He wasn't specifically a Nazi. He was against the Nazis. He spoke out against, um, I think, well, for a, I think for a brief period, he spoke out against the Nazis, and they kind of kept his head down for, for a bit, and then worked on the nuclear program there as well. So I th I, apparently his hope was that, and this is very controversial, the, the stuff that he did, apparently his hope was that the government would not sort of get its claws in, and they would kind of lose power, it would blow over, and it'd be best to stay on the better side of them rather than make them an enemy um, for the period that they were in power, you know? But, I mean, there's a difference between, like, just hanging out and waiting and like, and then, like, working on their nuclear program. Knowing that you're the, for, the, form, the foremost sort of... And it, we'll get into Heisenberg in a bit, but knowing that you're the foremost... Uh, sci one of the foremost scientists on this topic, if you were to turn down working on this project... Right. Yeah. You know, they're not going to be like, oh, okay, no, we'll just go to the other guy. Oh, that, like, that's understandable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I get it. You you don't want to work for us, so you're not against us, but you know, you you don't want to help us out. That's fine. That's not that's not a very Nazi thing to do. You know. No, they weren't the most considerate, <clears throat> were they? Yeah. No. <laughs> and they did no. not. They didn't really care. No. Um. <clears throat> so, yeah, he so he was working on that. We'll get into him in a little bit um later. So like like I said, um, th they took six hundred from his lab and shipped them off to um, the US um, after they were dug up from a field near where he was working. <clears throat> um, and yeah, so apparently some of them might have been used in the American nuclear weapon, sort of in the, the work on American nukes. But um, <clears throat> a lot of them belong to collectors. Uh, some of them were with researchers, uh, sort of research institu institutions. Um, some of them are with, I think, the American Chemical Society, who were... Uh, sort of pushing this research to try and figure out which ones uh, were real, which ones were fake. Um, and hundreds, hundreds of them just disappeared. Which is insane, right? Yeah. Hundreds of Weird. cubes of uranium just gone. Where did they go? Who knows? So the cubes... I think there's a story about how some countries don't know where all their nukes are as well. Uh, yeah, there's something how like... How do you misplace them? There's something like 10,000 nukes missing in the world. I think that's what I read. Yeah. There's well, like you, thousands of nukes missing. I don't know what, what that means. Luckily... We'll know if they turn up. That's true, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll know if they blow up. <laughs> Let's get the Find My Nuke app. <laughs> <laughs> Did you stick an air tag on them? <laughs> <laughs> no, so the cubes are made from uranium. They're measured uh, about two inches um, on the, the two inch cubes. So, I mean, actually, this is, a is fairly a, accurate. That is about that big, yeah. It's a little bit smaller than a chocolate orange. Mm. If yeah, you've seen so a chocolate orange. A little bit smaller than this. Just a little bit smaller than this cube I've got wow, in my hand. Wow, and that's yeah. quite small. This is small, yeah. So a little, yeah. little cube, they're only little cubes of uranium. But obviously, it's uranium, so it, it weighs quite a bit. It's quite heavy. Do you know how much it weighs? Off the top of my head, I don't. Okay. No. Um, so the, the, the cubes were sort of uh, hung on aircraft cables um, to make a kind of like chandelier that was put in heavy water. And do you know what, do you know what heavy water is? Uh, deuterium. Yes. Do you know what that is? Um, it is uh, H2O, where the hydrogen has two um, nu two neutrons. It has neutron. It has a neutron rather than just a proton and an electron. Yeah. So it's an is it's a sort of um, <clears throat> it's an isotope of hydrogen, which means that a hydrogen atom usually has a proton and an electron. That's a hydrogen mm -hmm. atom. Most uh, well, I say most pretty much every other um, every other element actually has um, protons and uh, neutrons, right? Hydrogen is kind of special, and it's only got um, uh, a proton with no neutrons. Now, you get an isotope of uh, an atom, or you get an isotope of an element if you add or remove a neutron, right? So what makes an element an element is having the correct number of protons. So all oxygen atoms have eight protons. Right. Yeah. Yeah? But some have different levels of neutrons. Yeah, but some... Yeah, no, sorry, you looked... You looked... Uh, disbel you looked no, no. sort of in disbelief there, it seems. No. Uh, <laughs> so all oxygen ha atoms have, I think, eight protons. Off the top of my head, I hope that is correct. correct. Yeah. yeah. So carbon has six protons. So if you were to take 
two protons away from your oxygen, you'd have uh, carbon. Incredibly heavy carbon. With um, extra neutrons. So you have an isotope mm. of carbon, right? Mm. So that's, that's all an isotope is. It's an element um, with the same number of protons because that's what makes the element, but with a different number of neutrons than it normally has. And because there's more neutrons, it's heavier. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Makes sense. Or it could have fewer neutrons and it could be, be lighter. lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, cool. um, uh, so this, uh, this hydrogen is an isotope of hydrogen, uh, deuterium. And it's called heavy hydrogen because it's got an extra neutron. It's got a neutron, so it's heavier. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, basically double the mass of a normal hydrogen atom. Yeah. Um, Could I just be very clear? Yeah, do you want to go? Um, deuterium is heavy hydrogen. Um, heavy water is when hyd uh, deuterium is made into a water molecule. Yeah. Because you said what's I, you said this, and I said, oh, deuterium. And then I then described heavy water, H2O with a heavy hydrogen, uh, two heavy hydrogen atoms. That is incorrect. There are, there's heavy hydrogen is deuterium. deuterium when you put deuterium into right. water, when you create water using deuterium rather than hydrogen, you have heavy water. Yes. Right. That is not deuterium. It contains deuterium. Yes. I did not want someone to fail their chemistry A level because I <laughs> messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I understood what you meant. Yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. So but unfortunately, the exam board will not. <laughs> <laughs> but Luke said so. <laughs> so you can fuse deuterium atoms, uh, like nuclear fusion. Um, uh, and essentially, what happens then is you get uh, a lot of a lot of energy being released. Right, get a lot lots of energy coming out. Um, and you can you can use that energy for nuclear weapons. Right, it's basically a, like it's just a lot of heat. Is produced, mm -hmm. um, and so obviously they were trying to use heavy water along with these uranium, um, these uranium cubes to start a sort of chain reaction that would be self-sustaining um, and basically create a, either get energy or create a nuclear explosion, right? And so you could use it for energy or weapons, mm -hmm. um, and that was the idea. So uranium um, causes uh, some kind of like. Uh, starts some kind of sort of chemical, uh, some not chemical, st starts some sort of um, nuclear chain reaction that becomes self-sustaining, creating a, a vast amount of energy which could be used for good purposes, like energy. Mm. It's nice. It's nice to have some energy. Mm. Or for, uh, you know, a weapon. Um, obviously, it, it didn't end up actually working out. Apparently, Heisenberg was a bit not quite there. He didn't fully understand it. When Apparently, when he found out about the, um, the bomb that was dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, well, the bombs that were dropped on there, um, he had a few questions and then figured out the, the things that he'd gotten wrong but the next day. But the questions that he asked apparently suggested that he didn't fully understand um, at that point how the nuclear weapons worked, if that makes sense. Like he wasn't quite there, mm -hmm. right? But there's also reports that people say, oh, well, actually, one of the reasons that they never got to these, got these weapons was a kind of, um, you know, kind of a Schindler's List situation wherein... Um, he didn't. He was specifically trying to not make the, make the weapons work. Sure, you know. Well, hey, if that's the truth, well done. Yeah, he was a little uncertain about the Nazis because <laughs> he had I principles. Thought you, I that's thought why. you two would he be principles. <laughs> I thought you two would be respectful today, and I thought that I would be making the I awful not, jokes. I did not participate. In that why one. is that an awful joke? Oh, you mean awful as in terrible joke, as in bad? No, no, it's not a disrespectful joke. No, look, it's fine. Look, it's fine. I'm just. Eisenberg was uncertain about. The Nazis, because he had principles. It's only disrespectful to Nazis. I'm perfectly happy with that. <laughs> True. Let's disrespect all Nazis. <laughs> if you're if you're watching this and you're no, that's no one principle. that's a Nazi would be watching this. Let's be real. You have no idea, man. This is the internet. <laughs> no, trust me. Na Nazis are not going to watch the three of us. You're ginger. Mm, that's true. Hey, I might. I, I I was always told growing up that I was like Hitler Youth material by my oh. teacher. <laughs> Because it was because I was fair. Yeah. What teacher was saying history? Please, not, for the love of God, no. tell me it was your history teacher. <laughs> no, it was my primary school teacher. <laughs> were you taught by a Nazi, Luke? No, they would just do that thing. You know that thing where they go in primary school and they go like they point at anyone who's like not not Hitler, like the thing that Hitler likes, and they go, "You'd be dead. You'd be dead. You'd be dead." And then they go, I did "Not this was not go, my primary school You'd experience. be in the Hitler Youth. You'd be in the Hitler Youth. You'd be in the Hitler Youth." This is not my is primary school all, experience, no. Really? No, that's not okay. a normal experience. Oh, okay. Right. Would Did, I be killed for being um, ginger? No. Oh, okay. I was making a 
joke and you oh okay no, oh, that serious. was horrifying I thought lots of people I'm pretty sure lots of people had that experience where they because it's just about oh, probably your entire class yeah it's about making you understand the 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 like ex- extreme extremes of that period of time yeah I feel like pointing at all the Jews and blacks and saying <laughs> you'd be dead it's just a little bit like mm, oh. maybe that's not the best way to teach them about that <laughs> you know traumatizing yeah yeah Okay. You'd be a slave, you'd be a slave, you wouldn't, you'd but be a slave owner. Was, the oh. point was just to go, I mean, the experience, I don't remember it being, obviously, because I was not being told I'd be dead, so maybe I had a different experience. But the point was to, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'd be the hit you. Oh, okay. Uh, but the point was to yeah, look you got, around and go, the point that it gave, you know, at least I took away from it, was to go, well, I actually really like all these people, and I don't see any of us as different, and why, why are these arbitrary rules being put on us? That's really messed up. Let's make sure that doesn't happen again. That was the effect. And I don't, I mean, maybe the, it was a horrible effect for everybody else who was chosen to be dead. That's very possible. Yeah. Um, I, I'll tell you this. Yeah. If I was told that in primary school, I would have. It was really definitely bo- shocking, but it was shocking in the way it was intended to be shocking, mm-hmm. I think. What, what got me in primary school was, or in high school, in school in general, was whenever they spoke about black people. In any in any lesson, mm. in, you know, in PSE, PSHE, maybe, mm. or history, or or whatever, you always get the little turn to look oh, back at me. Oh God! What the teacher or the students? The students. Okay. You know, this was messed, messed up if that was the teacher. Well, the teacher would sometimes look. Actually, no, we were doing. Um, God, I hope my, my friend George does not listen to this podcast, and it's a shame that he doesn't because this is a story that we love to tell. Um, I was in English, and my English teacher, we were doing. Um, to kill a mockingbird and she no she 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 seemed to feel so awkward mm. about saying any of the words that are present in that book um given that i was the only black person in the class and in the year at the time as well mm. um did she make you read it she didn't make me read it she specifically made the rest of the class read out the words because she was too afraid to, to say it herself whenever a passage was coming up with that word with any of the words in it even just negro she would be too uncomfortable to say it oh, God. and what would she do Give it to the rest of the students. They'd be like, okay, now it's time for you guys to read. There you go. Oh, right. So she wasn't going, we need to talk about the use of this word. No. no. She was going, oh, hey, no. 12-year-olds, you read this word. This was the same class where we had to rate the... Oh, my God. I, this is a, an assignment I refuse to do. It was just a, a, one, a quick one that we had to do that day. Uh, we had to rate different crimes by how bad they were. Different kinds of murder and different kinds of sex crime uh, that were present in... In To Kill a Mockingbird. What? Um, and rank them like a tier list. Yeah, which one was worst? To which one was less least bad? And I refused because well done. That's messed up. That is weird. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I speak. To, I speak to my friend George about this now, and I was what? like, I remember at the time he was like, "Come on, man, just do it. Why are you making me such a?" I'm like, "No, man, this is messed up." And this now is... we talk about it. He's like, "Yeah, man, that was messed up." Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. Uh, so back to the Nazi nuclear cubes. Um, one cube is held in the Pacific Northwest National Library, um, but no one apparently really knows how it ended up there. Like it just it just turned up there. Um, so took and, out a book from my shelf and it was just hiding behind. Oh, <laughs> look at this cube! Wow, maybe it is just a test rat. It's just you know oh. dropping around different places. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there's only one Nazi cube and it's just all in different places. Oh, like oh, electrons, yes. like the single electron yeah. theory. Oh, that's that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, what like electrons, champ? Or like Electron. Electro- oh, sorry. Mm. Electron. Mm. Yeah, I think. Uh, Has anyone seen two at the same place at the same time? I'm yes. going to tell you this. I've never even seen one Electron. No, but there are pictures of multiple Electrons. I'm talking about the cubes now. Yeah, but I've seen pictures of like Batman next to Bruce Wayne. Does that mean they're the same person? To be fair. People. What? I've made, I've like done like scenes with myself with split screen. Doesn't mean there's two That's of me. That's true, yeah. I've, yeah. You've done many music videos with, it's, it's your go-to almost, having yeah, it is. multiple... Multiple me's, multiple, multiple people in Multiple people in one music video, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, one of them just turned up and they're not really terribly sure how it got there. Um, apparently, um, it's labeled a Heisenberg cube because bear in mind, there were two labs that, that, were, that were working on this. Some mm-hmm. of them were Heisenbergs and some of them belonged to another scientist. And... So there are slight differences uh, between them. They've got different coatings on the outside, basically. It's one of the main differences. Um, and so we're trying to figure out how to find the other cubes and how to tell if a cube is a genuine one, you know? So... Can you, like, carbon date it, essentially? I know you've read the article. I haven't read you've the article. You've not read the article? No. Oh, wow. No. 
Amazing. That's I know how, how you, you get a Geiger counter. You see how many clicks it does. You know how old it is. Oh, because it decays. Well, it's not just about how old it is. It's a, yeah, but yeah, that you is. You know how long since it was enriched. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so there's a doctoral student, um, uh, Brittany Robertson, uh, Brittany Robertson at the, uh, what's it called? At the uh, Pacific Northwest National uh, Laboratory. I said library earlier. Laboratory. <laughs> uh, so she's a, she's a doctoral student there. Um, and she decided to use um, a technique called um, radio chronometry. So, um, yeah, you're, you're right. It's like carbon dating, really. Mm. So do you, do you want to explain carbon dating, either of you? So you have a half-life of a radioactive substance um, over an amount of time, whatever the half-life is. In that time, the radioactive substance will become half as radioactive, half of the substance will decay into its uh, whatever it's called when it's decayed. Mm -hmm. um, what is it called? Oh, it'll decay into this sort of more stable form of carbon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, based on, because, because mm -hmm. as it halves, um, it's, it basically tends towards zero. Um, uh, because once it's halved, it halves again and it halves again, um, because each second, each uh, radioactive um, element has a probability of um, decaying. Basically, if you know the mass and you know um, how much enriched uh, substance there should be, you can do a, use a Geiger counter, work out how many are decaying each second, and you know how much... Um, by that, you know how old it was since it was yeah. enriched. Yeah. So essentially, carbon. So it's carbon fourteen dating. So we know that carbon. Um, so carbon has uh, six protons, mm -hmm. and you know, sort of the normal sort of uh, carbon that we'd normally talk about, the non-radioactive carbon, has six neutrons as well, which would give it an atomic mass of twelve. Now, carbon fourteen has mm. eight neutrons. Yeah. Mm. Giving it, um, making giving it an atomic mass of uh, fourteen. So, um, essentially. There is carbon fourteen, like sort of continually made. It, it's made in nature all the time. Um, uh, basically, uh, I won't go into why, but or how it's it's made in nature, and so that's taken into your body when you eat, right? Because you eat carbon, right? That's, that's what sugar's made of, mm -hmm. um, carbon. So when you're eating, when you're eating that, um, it gets into your body, and it's constantly replenished. So while it decays, usually, you know, it normally is just decaying from your. It'd be decaying from your body. It'd be um, obviously, like Luke's talking about the half life. So every however long the half-life is, um, it will decrease by half. Um, it is, even though it is decaying at that rate, it is going to be replenished in your body to whatever the maximum sort of level of it, mm -hmm. it is because you're constantly eating. And because it's produced in nature, um, it, it, it keeps on going back into your body. But when you die, you stop bringing you stop stuff eating. in. Ah. Right? So because you stop eating when you're dead, um, you can then tell based on the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon 12 normal carbon mm. in sort of um in in a, a sort of like and this only works over quite long periods of time because of the half-life of sort of carbon 14 but um you can tell uh based on the ratio of those two how long something has been dead for yeah. which tells you how old it is and that's what we use uh that's how, how we use carbon dating in um sort of like sort of looking at fossils and whatnot yeah uh, basically you can be like ah oh, well this it's got this ratio to that ratio which means it, it, like uh if we assume it had this much, the ratio was this when the thing, like the minute the thing died, then it's been X amount of time since it died because some maths. Yeah, so like if, mm -hmm. if, you, if you imagine, you know what it was supposed to be when it died um, and you know the half-life is 50 years and it's got a quarter left, mm -hmm. then you know it's been 100 years because yeah. it halved and halved again. Well, yeah, so the half-life of carbon-14 is <laughs> 5,730 years. All right, more than 50. Yeah, so which is why, no, which is why you've got, it's, you can only work over quite long periods of time, right? Yeah. Um, because obviously... Lots of uncertainty at short mm. periods of time. Well, yeah, if it's any shorter, then it's like, well, it, we don't know that it'll even decrease fully by half yet, mm. you know? So, <clears throat> um, so yeah, that, that, that means that you can then sort of date things using the level of carbon-14 that is in them. And so that was developed by um, a man named Willard F. Libby in 1946 um, and it's used to date things from sort of 500 to 50,000 years old obviously any older than that it starts becoming there's too much uncertainty you know mm -hmm. there's not enough there to really figure out how old it is um, so it's used it's used by geologists anthropologists archaeologists just 
basically, you want to find out how old something that's old is mm -hmm. and use carbon dating. So radiochronometry is similar to carbon dating. Uh, you just essentially look at the age of a radioactive material other than carbon-14. Uh, and it is... The samples are all man-made. That's the difference here, that it's all man-made stuff. Um, so it all obviously comes from, at the very earliest, the start of the radiation age. Radiation era? You know, the nuclear era, nuclear mm -hmm. age, all of that, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that was the discovery of fission in 1939. So the oldest thing can really only be that old, which is what, like 82 years old, roughly? 1913? 1939. Oh, okay, then, yeah. 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 About that. Yeah, about that. Yeah. Yeah. Good to know. Um <clears throat> and so yeah, it's it's it it's it's a similar process, but it it's it's you know fairly useful to to be able to tell how old something is. And so they've just they've basically um there's there's a few assumptions that um that sort of this model operates under. So um it means that the uh Basically, the assumptions are that first, the material has remained a closed system since that time. There's not been any sort of um, loss or gain, in, like sort of applied to it. So you've not like removed anything from it specifically, or like re-enriched or anything like that. Um, and the second is that the analysis that you're doing is accurate. So that yeah, that would apply to pretty much everything. So you've got to, you basically have a model age is the point. So that there's a model age, and for that model age to be accurate to the actual age, those are the two main assumptions that you mm -hmm. make. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just seems strange. It's like, count this pile of pennies. Well, assuming I have counted them correctly, there is this many pennies. Counting a pile of pennies is a little bit more difficult. Is a little bit more easy. Sorry, than counting the number of radioactive, um, like sort of isotopes in a in a substance. Depends how many pennies there are. <laughs> well, no, count. It's quite a lot of pennies. To be fair. It's still it's still simple to count the pennies. It's just long. Sure, but if you got you know you got to remember them. That's quite hard. No, it, guys, you're you not going to win this one. Counting pennies is easy. I think count. with the technology we now have to do this, counting 25 billion pennies one by one would be harder than doing... You just weigh them. Oh. Yeah. Mm, okay. All right, you win. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, come on. It's I can't pennies. trust that. What if there are fake pennies in the mix? Mm. Why would there be fake? Well, that's an assumption, <laughs> Jamf. You're assuming there aren't any fake pennies in there. What if there are penny isotopes? That are, like, twice as heavy. Heavy pennies. Heavy pennies, yeah. Guys, you're talking about two pence pieces. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are they twice as heavy? I, what? They should be. No, they won't. They're be. not be. They're not. They're, they're not, not be. They're not be. They're not to be. <gasps> Imagine if that was the way that money worked. So that, like... A hundred, a, a, a hundred a fifty pound note be? <laughs> yeah. So heavy. Hundred dollar bill. <laughs> no, no, no. It only worked so it, with change, right? Yeah. The, uh, uh, like a one pence coin yeah. was sort of one percent of the the weight or mass of a <laughs> of a one pound coin. Yeah. That'd be cool. Sure. You'd be able to tell Wouldn't how much be cool money for your pockets. Well, you'd be able to tell how much money. Either your pockets would be really heavy, or the pennies would float away. Well, no, sure they blow away in the wind. <laughs> no, it's. Like a, between a you know a gram and a hundred grams, hundred grams uh, isn't that okay. much. Yeah, but a gram is not very much. Wait, a hundred grams per pound. Yeah, that's a quite a lot. Yeah, <laughs> you have well, ten pounds is a kilogram. <laughs> You're yeah. not carrying ten you pounds a, in a 50, coins yeah. around in your pocket. You got a ten pound note for that. Well, not yeah, if but, you have ten pounds. That coins. would have to be. That would have to be equal. Well, then to you weight, get them but... traded in. Yeah, I mean, sure, but how do you get them there? Well, it it's a kilogram, Luke. It's not that heavy. I'm quite weak. <laughs> But for ten pounds, it's quite a lot of work. It's a kilogram. It's so light. It's a it's like carrying a bag of sugar in to get a ten pound note. And it's it's small you though. Not, it's not big. It's little. It's easy. Okay. It's a little bag of sugar. Yeah. It weighs the same as a normal bag yeah. of sugar. Yeah. <laughs> well, it would rip your pockets though. So, um, yeah. So what they've done here, um, is that when when these cubes were first made, it was the uranium that they used was fairly pure. But obviously, over time, it will have transformed into, um, I say obviously, the, obviously, the uranium will have transformed into uh, protactinium and thorium. Mm, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, clearly. Well, uh, my yeah. iPad has actually just died. I had to remember those words all, all off the top well of my done. head. Obviously, yeah. yeah. Obviously. Uh, and so, essentially, if you can, if you figure out, uh, you know what the half-life of uranium is, and you figure out roughly um, the sort of approximate um, ratios of uranium to protactinium and, protactinium and thorium, mm. you can uh, find out how old um, these cubes are. And do you do that with a Geiger counter? Um, I don't think so. So a Geiger counter would measure 
um, the sort of radiation coming off of it. You want to measure the ratio of uh, uranium to protactinium and thorium. But would you not do that with like, okay, so if you have a certain amount of mass, mm -hmm. you know how many, um, on average, how many decays per second there would be. So you know how many, how much um, uranium is left compared to the mass of the object you're... Um, so if it's, if it's decaying per second, the amount that 10 kilograms... No, so they, they, separate, they separate and quantify the elements. Really? Yeah. But then you destroy the thing. Yeah. Oh, you don't have your cube anymore. Well, you could probably... I mean, they probably would maybe take a sample of it then, I guess? Yeah. So Robertson basically adapted the normal sort of... Or the usual sort of radiochronometry um, sort of process and um, basically took the elements from the the cube in the um in the sort of laboratory that she was working in um and figured out what the ratio of those elements were um and it basically made you, it, it gave her the idea of when uh, or sort of rather rather where the original uranium was mined um as well because she managed to figure out the impurities that were in the cube oh. and so based on the specific impurities that were in the cube she could figure mm. out okay well these impurities would have only been, these impurities sort of indicate this kind of earth. Mm. Where, so it was mined from here. So you could then test the other cubes as well to see, okay, well, this is where these were mined and this is when these were made. So does that give you a way of knowing, for example, or potentially knowing that these are genuine cubes? Yeah, because, because she has a genuine cube yeah. and then she can test the other cubes based on this cube. Mm. Yeah. And obviously one of the assumptions is that that cube that she's got is a genuine cube, but that's fairly certain. Um, and, so yeah, like the, the the whole idea is that you can now basically, if you find one of the cubes, you can be like, well, we'll just run this test and see whether it's a genuine one or not. Mm. And um, as well, what is interesting about this is that, like I said, they have different coatings on the cubes uh, to stop the uranium from oxidizing. Now, you know what oxida oxidation is? Of metals. Yeah, rusting. It's rust, isn't it? Well, yeah, so r rust really only applies to iron. Okay. Um, right. Yeah, no, like everyone says, oh, this copper's rusted. It's, it's not, it's oxidized. Um, so it's basically, yeah, it's, the it's just the metal reacting with the air essentially cool. mm. um so you know copper oxidizes to be that sort of greenish color um rust is um right. yeah. oxidized um iron yeah so um what does uranium turn into when it rusts just, or what happens to it uranium oxide yeah, probably something like that yeah right yeah cool i mean i i it, it, that is what oxidation is generally right because yeah. iron oxide is um is rust or it might be iron i don't know what the actual chemical formula is but yeah Yes, is basically the short answer. So they've, they they have different coatings on them to stop the uranium from oxidizing. And the the cube that they the cube that they've got there at the laboratory was coated in styrene, but Heisenberg's lab used a cyanide coating. And from that, they figured out that apparently um, Heisenberg had a cube sent um, from the other laboratory to his. And so while the cube that they've got isn't technically a Heisenberg cube made at the laboratory. The reason that they've got it is because it was taken from the Heisenberg laboratory, right? So basically just by looking at the coating. So now you've got a really cool way of figuring out, okay, not only do we know if these are the genuine cubes mm. based on where they were mined and how old they are, but we also know which lab they were from based on the coating from them, which is really cool, right? So it, it's all of this. We're, we're now able to basically find these um, Nazi nuclear cubes and determine whether they're actually the sort of Nazi nuclear cubes rather than, say, fakes or anything like that. So if someone's right. selling one, you can be you can be sure that it is the real one test for and then also take it from them because it's probably illegal to, to own it, right? Because it's uranium or because it's Nazi? Honestly, Luke, pick one. That's interesting. Is it illegal to sell like Nazi artifacts? I think it would probably be illegal to steal, to sell stolen Nazi artifacts. Yeah, sure. Stolen Nazi artifacts. Especially yes. Nazi artifacts used in nuclear weapons. Yeah. So that is the story of the Nazi nuclear cubes. Essentially, they are cubes of uranium that were made during World War II uh, in an effort to create nuclear weapons. Uh, but thankfully, they never they never actually worked. And they were basically taken to America, a bunch of them. But obviously, hundreds of them were lost. And now mm. we've figured out, I say we figured out, um, uh, a doctoral student, I think, um, has figured out how to how to sort of test to see if they're the real, the real deal. Very cool. It's pretty Good cool, news. I think. You don't think so? Yeah. Yeah. More or less. More or less? Yeah. Okay, and that's... Not necessarily the, something we needed to know, but it's fun for history. Well, I mean, I think it's... it's useful. It's useful, yeah. Mm. I think it's definitely useful. Um, and, it, I mean, it could be applied... It could be applied elsewhere, surely, you know? If we ever lose any more uranium, you know? And we happen to coat them in different things? Yeah. 
Are we mine it from one particular or from one particular place? Yeah, the stuff about like the impurities. That's that's so. That's, interesting. That was very cool. When I read that, I was like, oh, that's that's smart. That's that's more than just the sort of basic like let's just look to see how old it is. It's like oh, let's see where it's from as well. Yeah, very that's cool. like the a thing I heard recently. Um, again on No Such Thing as a Fish, lovely podcast that I love. You're gonna have to start um, paying us if you're gonna keep on. They need them. more shout outs, don't they? Sorry, guys. Supporting the little podcast. It's just really interesting. It was talking about how we one of the evidences that some dinosaurs migrated was because dinosaurs eat stones to help them digest, and oh. we found stones in different areas um, from that period that were in areas they didn't belong in. Oh, that's um, so cool. And so it meant that they were eating them using them to suggest walking around, migrating, and then pooping them out somewhere else. Oh. And there was no other way that those stones could get there. There was no rivers or anything. So yeah. That's so cool. Wow. I, that reminds me of that reminds me of I can't remember the name of it, but there's this particular name in archaeology for a stone that is somewhere where it shouldn't be. Ah. Um, now it's not a stone that was that is that has been carved or been sort of uh, used for any purpose. It's a stone that a person has found and thought, this mm. looks like a nice stone. Has, mm. has taken it with them somewhere. Wow. Or aliens. It's not aliens. Mm. Unless it's not white people. Or dinosaurs. Ah. Yeah. That's, I think that's a rule to get live your life by. No, seriously. Okay, just quickly before we finish this episode. Just quickly before we finish. I need to get this little one in, right? Whenever you see people talking about aliens did it, ask yourself, are they saying aliens did it about white people? Or about not white people? Mm. I promise you it's about not white people because the whole, the most of the, the whole sort of like, Aliens are the one that did this because how could they figure out the technology is racist. Easter Island heads, racist. Pyramids, mm. racist. Mm. Although I do like that one where people think that angels might be um, aliens, flying human aliens. That is cool as heck. Because those aren't, those aren't, they're, those are just, they're just saying angels. That's fine. That's cool. I'm good with that. Angels might be any yeah. color. Yeah. You know, that's, wait, no, what? No, yeah. it's not the color of the, the aliens. It's the no, color of the people. I know. Okay. So the angels might be any color. So, anyway. <laughs> Good are, to know. Are there any alien theories about Stonehenge? Uh, yeah. I mean, there are, yeah, I mean, there are alien theories about all of those. Like, wow, like Corey's, all of those. Cr- <laughs> Corey's argument crumbles. No, there are, <laughs> there are alien theories about all those places, yeah. but so often you hear, yeah. like, oh, we, there's no, we have no idea how they did this when we, there, we have a fairly we do know. idea. We do know. Yeah. 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 Quite cut and dry, yeah. Crazy. Not for the slaves. No. So that is it. Uh, mostly. Now there's one more thing that we've got to do. Um, is it a quick fire, quick fire quiz? quiz? Quick fire quiz. Dun, 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 dun. Uranium edition. Okay, good. So the quick fire quiz is very simple. I will ask one question between the two of you. One question only. The first person to answer the question with the buzzing in to answer the question after I finished asking the question wins. What do they win, Jam? I'm not sure I know the rules anymore. Uh, absolutely <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Luke, what's your buzzer? <laughs> Poor taste. Jam, what's your buzzer? Uh, That's a cat hissing at the nuke. Yeah. Just before it goes how'd off. You, how'd you get that? Yeah, well, yeah. I like cats. I don't like what's going on between you two here. So my question <laughs> for you both... <laughs> my question for you both is... <clears throat> What was the width of the cubes? <laughs> oh, Luke, I think I'm going to go with you. I, to be honest, I think Luke got that. It was two inches. It was. Two inches, Luke, really? <laughs> Jam, clip that. Hey, Luke, <laughs> how, Luke, how long is your penis? Perfect. Thank it was two much. inches. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, probably. <laughs> right now? It was two inches. <laughs> Was is the operative word. Wow. Yes. I hate this gone toxic now. masculinity. <laughs> it's gone. He's lost it. It's now 1.5. <laughs> Before we go, we would like to thank all of our patrons with a very special thank you to executive producers Ashley Muller and Finn TZ. And also, thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday and why not leave us a nice wee comment. You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys or you can find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and at SciGuys on TikTok too. Or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. <sighs> SciGuysPod at gmail.com. SciGuysPod <laughs> <laughs> at gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCore everywhere. Follow me at Jampkin everywhere. You can follow me at Luke Cutforth everywhere. Goodbye. Goodbye. I've been doing this outro for almost two years. Right I saw so my water and I was like, I haven't drunk that yet. <laughs> Why did you drink it at exactly that moment? Wow. Goodbye.
Bye.